let's get started. I'm very excited. Um, welcome to the July 2016 Project of the Month. As DJ already mentioned to you earlier, this is called Floral Fun. Um, so I'll go through the software lesson and tips and tricks on how to put the project together. But in this month's project, we're going to be creating a custom shadow box. So you see a picture here on the front page. So uh, without further ado, um, a project at a glance. Be sure to download the July 2016 free designs. When you download your free designs, you will also have the project of the month downloaded. And in a minute, um, as a part of this webinar, I will make sure to show you where you can access those resources. And uh, Kathy Quinn also did an educational video for you on where to find the handout that you need to do the project. This month, you get, and every month you do the project of the month, I want you to know that you will be receiving a free design from one of our wonderful design collections. The design that I chose for you this month is from the Floral Tapestry Collection, and that's what you see here on the screen. These beautiful floral tapestries, and you'll see that heart, the dotted heart right here, is around the free design that you're going to get this month. And then you will have a handout included with that that has your how-to instruction. Um, the handout looks like this. You will print it off on paper. Um, as I said, in a minute, I am going to show you where to access that handout because when you download your free design, this handout comes with that. And then all you need to do is locate it. It's a PDF file and you click on print. Okay, um, within that handout, one of the things that you will have is all of the materials that you need. Um, you want to make sure that you have your Floriani Total Control U software. This is a software-based lesson. Um, you do not have to have the software to participate in the webinar, and thank you for participating, but um, in order to complete the software component of the lesson and to get the free design, you will need to have the software for that. So in the handout, I include a basic skill level. I really try to keep the skill level of the projects um, from beginner to intermediate. I really, it's not my intention to include any advanced techniques for sewing, um, just basic sewing. Um, software level is another one. Like I said, I try to keep this fairly basic. So uh, when I say comfortable beginner, um, when I'm talking about that, I want to make sure that you are comfortable in using computer and software, that you've opened up the software, you've downloaded your most recent update, and you uh, know those kinds of things in there. Um, your Floriani materials are included in there. Of course, your Floriani embroidery threads. We're going to be using Floriani heat and stay fusible fleece this month, or any other kind of fusible fleece. But of course, Floriani is the best. Your Floriani perfect stick tearaway stabilizer your Floriani medium tearaway stabilizer, and that's for purposes of floater. You will need a thread chart, and I don't know if you've purchased the thread chart at an event, but I really encourage you to do that. It really, um, when you're matching thread colors to a fabric, it really enhances and elevates the results that you get when you match your threads to your fabric, either contrasting, analogous, complementary, similar, whatever your Floyani um, embroidery needles and some embroidery protection tape. So you wanna make sure you download your free designs and you have your handout in here. Before we get started, uh, in the picture that you see here, I started my project with a piece of fabric. I always am looking for inspiration in different places. And when my dealer, my local dealer showed this fabric, I fell in love with it. I have to tell you, I drooled over this fabric. So as soon as she got it in, I said, oh my gosh, I have to have some. The fabric is by E.E. E. Shank, and it's called Gelato. And it is a tonal fabric. When you look at that, this picture does not do it justice. And it comes in different tonal values, so like a blue and a green. But this is uh, goes from fuchsia to yellow. I took my piece of thread, a uh, fabric, as you'll see here, and then I went with my thread chart, which you'll see over here on the right, and I started picking colors, thread colors, that were 
very similar to the values of my fabric. And I found spread of, uh, five of them. So they go from yellow all the way into a, a purple, a fuchsia color in there. Because in this month's lesson, you're going to create a custom thread chart. And I think that once you see how to do this, that um, it really can help you when you're working on specific projects. So pick your threads first, and I picked my threads based on the values in my fabric. I created a video that got posted up that's on making a thread chart. So it's kind of like an enhancement to this particular lesson. It's making a thread chart, but something even more that you can do with it. And to find that video, go to your My Floriani Club, the www.myfloriani.club. Click on your, if you see my mouse here, click on the training videos. Under the training videos, look for the category called general how-to videos and click on that. And this is the page that will open. The most recent video, it's this one right here, and it's called Spring Summer Color Chart. And the video is actually um, the trending colors thread palette that we had. Recently, they're sold out, by the way, but we have a new one coming out, and it'll be fall trending colors. And this video showed you how to take those trending colors and um, create a thread chart so that you could use those trending colors in your design. So make sure that you watch that video. It's 10 minutes. All right, let's go ahead, and I'm going to toggle over to the software lesson. So I'm clicking over to my FTCU, and I already have it open. And I mentioned to you, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a custom thread chart. I need to open up a document, so let me go ahead and click on my piece of paper. And to create a custom thread chart, you're going to go into your tools menu, which is the word on top tools. I left click, and I'm going to come down, and I'm going to locate this thread chart creator, and it's going to pop up. All right. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to give our thread chart uh, a palette, a new name. And I'm going to call this A Floral Fun. Now, it's not the, there's a reason for me putting A in the front there. When we go to select our thread chart, the thread charts are alphabetized. So by putting the letter A or an AA or a triple A at the front, then that's going to ensure that my thread chart <clears throat> that I create is going to be at the top of the list so that I don't have to go through and find it. And the reason why I do that is that I've created thread charts before, and I kind of forget the name because I did it a while ago, and then it makes them harder to find. So I'm going to put this one at the top. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to do what's called import uh, threads from existing palettes in the software. So when you purchase software, you have palettes that are installed into your software on the most popular thread brands out there. So I'm going to click on this import button, and I'm working from a Floriani thread palette. I'm only using Floriani threads, but I'm going to click on this drop down so that you can see that not only can I bring in a thread from Floriani, maybe I'm going to incorporate a metallic thread into it. Maybe I'm using a different brand. You've noticed that we've got Hemingsworth, we've got Isocords, we've got Madeiras. Um, if you are a Jenny Haskins user, that you'll notice that we have Jenny Haskins palette in here. And when you create a thread palette, you can mix and match a custom thread palette from all different brands of threads. So I wanted to point that out to you. Um, let me go back to my Floriani Poly. And when I matched my thread colors, with my fabric, I wrote down the colors that I needed. So we're going to come down to this question mark and click on that. And the first thread color that I came up with was 137. So I'm going to type the number 137 into that box right here. And I'm going to click on Find. So it's going to go all the way through those. And right here, there's a light blue box around the color 137. And it's Fandango. So I'm going to click on import. Now my next color that I'm looking for is 83. So I'm going to click on find. And then it's going to take me to that. And it's right here. And I'm going to import it. And then I'm going to go to my next color. And I'm going to click on 156 and find. And that was, let's 
go through right here and I'm going to click on import. So this is really, really quick. This isn't going to take a lot of time in your project to create these custom thread palettes. Um, and then I've picked five colors in there and the last color is 523. And I click on fine and there's 523 and I click on import. And now I'm going to exit from this screen. So here's the five colors that I had in the picture that I showed you. This is my five color palette. And so this is going to be a custom palette for my project of floral sun. Now this is real important. At this step right here, you want to make sure that you click on save. And it will say, do you want to save your thread palette? And you're going to say yes. If you inadvertently click the exit button right here, you haven't saved your thread palette. And when you go to find it, it's not going to be there. So learn from my mistakes, save, then exit. All right. So I've created my custom thread chart. How do I bring up that thread chart for you? If you come down to your select thread chart color, here's your th nice thread palette. I'm going to click on the select thread chart here. And see right there, this is why I named it A Floral Sun, so that it appears at the top of the list. So I'm going to grab my a floral fun, and now I've got my custom thread palette right there for the project that I'm going to be working on. Okay, so that's fairly easy so far. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come over. Hold on, got a little issue here with my palette. Let me minimize my screen so I can get to it. I have my webinar palette and it's over the top there. So I apologize. I had everything set up ahead of time, but I didn't take into account my webinar palette. All right, so here's my library tab. Once you have downloaded your free design, um, where do you find them? So this is the library panel. This is where you find free monthly designs. And once you have downloaded your free designs, then you're going to have free FTCU projects. And I'm going to click on that plus sign. So we're now up to July. So I'm going to um, click on July and expand it. All right, there's two here. We're not going to use this lettering files yet. We're going to click on here and come over to the designs flyout. And these are the two designs. Now, this is the completed design. So if you know, I'm, and I'm trying to do that. It's like I'm putting the whole design together and then I'm going to give you the, uh, the completed design so that if you go through the lesson and you really can't figure out how to do it, but you want to make the project, the design is there for you and all you need to do is open it up, save it for your machine and take it out and stitch it over there. But this is your free design that we're going to work with and we're going to bring it in. Now, this is a beautiful design, but the colors that are in here, I'm going to, and I want you to see what happens to this when we start playing with the colors. And I don't know if you've found this tool yet, but this is your color play tool. And people, this tool is so much fun. Wait till you see what we are going to do with this. I'm going to click on color play. Now, you want to make sure that you have your most recent um, download your recent update for your Floriani software because if you don't have the most recent update you're going to be missing this little tool right here maybe the tint tool and that's the one that we're going to be using for this lesson when uh, DJ showed us that this was going to be one of the tools in the software I thought oh my gosh this is something I can really have fun with so we're going to use that tint tool today <clears throat> and with the tint tool we're going to start with a color right here, a basic color. And I just started with this color. You can manipulate that. So for instance, I'll just kind of show you. Watch this color solid right here. As I move around in the color palette here, and I could even type in an exact value, an RGB value. But as I move around in that palette, it's updating that. Once I have a color, I can um, lighten or darken that. So I can change the hue or the saturation, and that's just adding white or adding black to a color by using this slider right here. So you really have a lot of control over the color. You can have a lot of fun with this. But we're, for simplification purposes, going to start with this color and say, okay. All right, and the first time you use the tool, 
just follow the steps like I'm doing it now and then go back and definitely play with this. All right, once we have this, we're going to say OK. Now, what I've just done is I've updated the thread colors of the design. And the software looks at using the original color values of that original design. And let me just do an undo so you can see this, see the color values and redo based on the colors that I gave it, it's updated it. And you can do this with any kind of a, a color scheme. But ladies and gentlemen, when you use this color tool with a design, I have to tell you it's amazing because I, I don't want to say about a design that I don't like, but I will tell you this. This is a great design, but the colors don't inspire me. Um, I found that if I can take a design and put colors in there that inspire me, we're all drawn to unique colors. And I love really bright, vivid colors. You know, if you've been watching these webinars for a while, you know that I'm, I'm really drawn to bright, vivid colors. And so when I look at that design and I'm looking at this, all of a sudden I'm going, whoa. I love that. Or maybe it's a teal or, or you know, maybe you even want to do, you know, sepia tones or something. You really can um, modify and, and alter a design and, and, you know, I haven't changed any stitches or anything else and now I have a totally different design. Um, so once I've got that taken care of, so we've updated that, <clears throat> the next thing that we're going to use is we're going to use another one of our tools. And it's this one right here called the Corners Repeat. And, oh, let me select that first. Sorry, you have to select it. And now let's click on the Corners Repeat. Okay, so this is another tool that I, I if you haven't played with it, you can really have some fun with it. I'm going to take this and um, see right here? So we can change the angle in here, and you can go up. Let me show you this when I go down, because I think this one. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking if I were going to put together maybe a pillow and I wanted to do a monogram on the inside, when I'm looking at this, if I were doing like a rectangular pillow, maybe not square, but rectangular, this could be a beautiful design. It would fill out that fabric in there and then I could put um, a monogram on the inside. That would be so much fun. So throwing that out there, please feel free to go with that project. But in the handout, you'll see that what I decided on is we're going to go with negative 270 on there. And do you see what's happened? I've just created a perfect rectangular shape with this. Perfect rectangular shape. Make sure that you have this little button right here checked, auto sequence, resequence by color. The thing that this tool does is, is that now I've perfectly spaced out that design in four corners at perfect right angle. And when I auto resequence this, in the old traditional fashion, if I wanted to put this design in four areas, make a box out of this square design, I would copy and paste it four times, I'd rotate each design, I'd line it up. But they're still individual designs. What this tool does is, this is the best way I can describe it, I have duplicated that design four times. I've taken one design and now it's four times. The software is going to auto resequence this, and so when I stitch the design out, it's actually going to see those four individual designs as one individual design. So that instead of me having to, every time I stitch out the design, update my threads and babysit my machine, then it's, it's going to um, coordinate those for me. So now I've got this great design. And look at that. Look how it's going to stitch out. So it's going to be very methodical. I did not have to do anything with it. Isn't that fantastic? Koreani software is one of, it's the best. There's so many great tools in here for us to use. All right. The next thing that I want to do real quickly, though, is, is that um, I'm creating a shadow box. So one of the materials that you need, or it doesn't have to be a shadow box, but a shadow box is a picture frame with a piece of glass on it. And you create a 3D effect, so you put stuff underneath the glass, and then you have a backdrop in there. So um, this is going to be a custom shadow box, or maybe you just want to do this as a picture. And my idea behind this was, uh, okay, so it's 
July, August, we've got kids going back to school. I'm thinking about kids going back to school and decorating dorm rooms. And wouldn't this be a great going away gift for the college student in your life? And you could customize the colors to match their dorm room or maybe to match the school colors of the college or university that they're going to. And you can customize the words that are on there because when I look at shadow boxes at the store, the one thing that frustrates me is they have words on them, but they're never my words. I wanted words that reflect my personality or, you know, it's like a greeting card. You go to the store and why are there 10 million greeting cards to pick from? Because somebody else is writing the words on there. So this project, you get to customize it. So that's what I was thinking, um, creating a custom box, a shadow box for somebody special in your life. So the shadow boxes come in standard sizes. And so I think they come in like a six by six, eight by eight, 10 by 10, 12 by 12. I think 12 by 12 might be the biggest. And the one that I grabbed was an eight by eight. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my transform tab and I'm going to resize this design. So my shadow box is eight by eight and it has a picture frame and I'm just going to toggle over to this picture so that you can see it. So see my picture frame here? So do you see how my design actually is inside the picture frame? So think about it. Is this, if this frame measures eight by eight and I make my design eight by eight, what's gonna to happen to my designs over here on the side? They're gonna be cut off. Okay, so that makes sense, doesn't it? Clear as mud, I'm sure. So if my picture frame is eight by eight, I gave myself a half an inch on each side, like, like a seam allowance. And so I'm gonna come over to my transform tab and I transform that shape. Do you see, I do not have the maintain aspect ratio selected, okay? Um, so I've got 7.5 and 7.5 and then click on apply. So that's the shape size that I came up with. And you know, if I had a 10 by 10 frame, then I'd resize my design and I'd make it nine and a half by nine and a half. So I hope that that makes sense. But that was kind of my thinking behind, well, how big am I gonna make this? <clears throat> okay, so it's getting just about done here. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, update our thread palette. Update our thread palette, there we go. All right, so let me deselect off of that, okay? Now, I could take this over to the machine and I could stitch it out just as it is and be happy with it. But remember, I've got this beautiful custom thread palette that I created. And this is really the colors that I want to do because that fabric that I showed you goes from yellow to, to, to purple to fuchsia. And so by using this thread palette, I feel like I have a perfect coordination of the colors in there. So let's watch how you're gonna do this. When you create a custom thread palette, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this top color. And what your software does is that you do, there's, like I said, uh, thread colors are only RGB values. And so when I select this first color, what my software does for me is it looks at this, these, the color values here. And based on those RGB values, those numbers in the backdrop, it says this is going to be the closest match to that color. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, I know that that's not pink, but watch what happens when you just go with what I'm telling you to do. So I'm gonna select that, okay. Let me deselect this so that you can see. Now, I don't know that that looks too good. So let's go to our second color here. And that tells me that it needs to be this Fandango. So let's select that one, okay. Now also notice that once I update these, See, it puts the name of my thread chart over there in this sequence view. It shows me the thread palette that I'm using. So if you create a custom palette and you're using all different brands of threads, the nice thing is, is that it maintains the name of that thread. And so you're going to know, oh, that's a, a Jenny Haskins thread. Oh, that's a Floriani thread in there. So, all right, let's grab this one right here, right there, and select that color. So I'm just pretty much letting the software do that, but I've got five colors and I want to make sure that I use every one of my five colors. So I grab that one and then what's the last one that I have not used? I've used three. And there you go. 
Okay, so I've used every one of those colors. And I might go back to this and manipulate it just a little bit. But to be perfectly honest, <clears throat> these colors, this is the pattern that I, this is exactly how I created the design. And I think I went back and it was like, oh, you know, I want to have more of this color. And I think that should be not quite so much. So I just manipulated this visually once I got those in there until I had a nice aesthetically pleasing color palette. In there. And that's how I updated the colors. Um, and when you look at the picture, the picture doesn't really speak to what this is. I think it's like any of the projects that we do. When we take a photograph of it, it doesn't translate it as much, but I was at an event this weekend out in Little Rock. Um, the store was so much more up in Sherwood. Great people. If you're listening and you were there, thank you for coming. I had a blast. But when people saw this uh, shadow box, it's stunning. I mean, it's really one of those, oh, my gosh, did you make that? I can't believe you did that. Tell me how you did it. So when you use this uh, project kind of recipe and create something for yourself, you're really going to be happy with the results. You'll be really happy with it. All right, now we've got this done. So I would recommend that at this point in time, when you get it looking the way that you want it and the size you want it, let's do a quick save. And of course, I've got a little uh, folder right here called Floral Fun that I keep for my webinar. And I'm just going to uh, call this Floral Fun. And notice that I'm going to go ahead and save this as my WAF file because if I decide that I need to make some changes to this later, I want to make it bigger or smaller, I'm going to work with my original WAF file. Now, once I've got my WAF file, um, let's save this out for our machine. And today, we're going to use our Save to Sew. And I'm going to zoom in on this area right here before we get started with the Save to Sew. <clears throat> and I want to show to you. I think pictures are worth a thousand words. But this is your Save to Sew button, or I can come in here and I can go File, Save to Sew. Save to Sew is built into, and you know, this is a unique property of the Floriani software. Nobody else has it. But when we embroider a design, every fabric that we embroider on has different properties. And I think I've talked about this before, but I like to go back and clarify it, especially if you're fairly new to embroidery or new to Floriani software. But when we're looking at fabric and we're embroidering a design, if we're a commercial embroiderer or a professional embroiderer, or we've been doing this for 50 years, we may go, oh, I'm putting that on knit, knit fabric. I need to make sure that my underlay is a zigzag and that I do this and this. Well, I haven't been doing this forever, and I will never remember that. So what this tool does is that it examines your design based on the fabric. And look how many fabrics there are. Every fabric that you can think of is in here. So based on the fabric that you're going to put this design on, and we're on, I'm on quilting fabric. That fabric that I'm using is quilting fabric. So I'm pressing the Q key on my keyboard, and it takes me right down to Q. Or I could scroll, um, and uh, I digitized it. And then, based on the fabric that you choose, you're going to have to say what kind of a design it is. And this is not for every fabric. Sometimes on the fabric, you don't have a choice. It, it tells that for you. But when I choose quilting fabric, it wants me to tell the, the Save to Sew tool, well, what are the characteristics of your design? Now, open and airy designs like red work and black work are really pretty forgiving designs. So if you do not stabilize properly for those, and, and a red work doesn't really have any underlay, you don't have to worry about it. But if I'm stitching a design based on the fabric and it's got any kind of a satin stitch or a fill stitch in there, if I can manipulate the underlay and the push-pull, I will get better results. I don't know how to manipulate the underlay or the push-pull. I don't have to worry about it. That's what Save to Sew is going to do for me. So this is a solid and dense design. It's got satin fills in there. It's got um, uh, fill stitches in there. Am I going to hoop the fabric? Now, this is going to manipulate the design itself. When you tell it you're going to hoop or not hoop, this is going to help you to stabilize 
correctly based on this design. We're not going to hoop this. I don't hoop fabric. There's a reason for it. And I'm going to click on next. Now, do you see what's going to happen? This is going to look at the design based on the fabric that I selected, and it will apply a new density, and it'll put the appropriate density in there for the fabric that I'm putting it on. And it'll apply a new underlay and a new push-pull compensation. It does all of that for me. I don't have to know this in the back of my mind. And I'm going to go next. Okay. And if you watch, and this is why I zoomed in, because I really want you to see what happens here. This design is going to change. It actually changes the underlay. Let me just undo. I like to always do an undo here. Okay. Let's do an undo right here. Do you see what it did there? Undo. And when I redo, it's changed the underlay and the stitch density in there based on the fabric that I'm putting it on. So I hope that that kind of explains to you a little bit more about what Safe Sew can do for your design. Now, uh, I'm going to do a disclaimer for Save to Sew. There's a little tool in software, and we call it, or in computers, we call it garbage in, garbage out. And I was just talking with DJ before I got on this phone call about designs and properties of designs and older designs. Um, older designs that were poorly digitized, um, if, they have, if, they, if they're bad designs, I'm sorry, running, th running them through Save to Sew is probably not going to fix them. I'll just put that disclaimer. So um, I, once I've got my Save to Sew in there, this is the other thing that I do, and this is just a workflow habit. When I get ready to save this, and I'm going to save it uh, as a WAF file, okay, I like to put in there floral fun, and then I put in here quilting. Because I ran this design through, whoops, spelled well properly, I'm talking and typing. So when I run this through the software, okay, I've, I've changed the properties in there for quilting fabric. So when I save it, I just put quilting in there, and so when I go back that that design and reopen mm -hmm. it, I know that, oh, you know what, I made some changes to that design based on the fact that I'm going to put it on a piece of quilting fabric. So I incorporate the fabric into the name. Uh, once again, I save it as a WAF file. Once you've got that saved, then the next thing you'll do is you'll file Save As, and you're going to save it for your machine format. Okay, remember, our machines don't read WAF files. Now, let me zoom out to 100%, and I'm going to explain um, something to you about this particular project. Excuse me, zoom to fit. Okay, I get in the habit of putting together projects that I can embroider on big hoops. I like to do everything all at one time. I have this thing called hoop envy. I kept buying machines with bigger and bigger hoops on them. Um, and I, when I bought the picture frame as an 8x8, I did that because then I knew that I could stitch the whole design at one time. Um, but this project, if you are working on a smaller machine, I did not forget about you. If you're working on a smaller machine, this is your, going to be your workflow. Go ahead and put the project together just like you would here. And then at this point, you could print it on a piece of template tearaway if you wanted to. But what I would do is I'd just copy that design, I'd paste it into a blank document, and I'd save that out, okay, and you're going to stitch it four times. So you actually have to physically manipulate the fabric in there. But then this is why we have template tearaway, I feel. Make sure that you um, say, uh, print this onto your piece of template tearaway and um, get your... Uh, crosshairs on there, make sure you have the crosshairs showing so that when you print this, you've got those crosshairs and it helps you match this up. And you're going to have per perfect placement almost to the point that you stitched it all by yourself. So Template Tearaway, ladies and gentlemen, is an amazing product. I do have to say this is one of the, I, I love it because um, my early embroidery, I hated to multi-hoop because I was so fearful of trying to line up a design. And once I started, I discovered Template Tearaway, and I started using it, it was like, oh my gosh, I can do this, I can multi-hoop, and my design lines up perfectly every time. I've also used Template Tearaway when I'm doing a quilt, 
for the placement of quilt motifs and things like that. So, But that's how I would do that if I were working on a smaller machine. All right. Now, the next thing that I'm going to showcase, um, and that's about the design, is that I'll go back and show you the picture. Because in this project, it's got lettering on here. And this is um, this project was created in, in more than one medium. And so this is a piece of glass over the shadow box. And this is actually vinyl lettering. So I have one of those digital cutting machines. And um, you can cut lettering. Look how precise that is. Uh, you can cut the lettering. And so I cut this myself. So if you have one of those machines, I'm going to show you how I did this. If you don't have one of those machines, you've got a couple of options for the project. So uh, instead of adding the text um, on the glass to give it that 3D effect, you could just go ahead and add the text to the embroidery design and stitch it out as lettering. The other option is if you go to your big box stores, they actually have this vinyl lettering that you can buy. So you can just buy the pre-cut vinyl lettering, and some of it even comes in words, you know, that you would put on walls or mirrors or things like that. And you can buy that ahead of time. But the nice thing about doing this project is, is that, you know, I want to have total control over this project. So I'm going to go back to that library tab and that lettering files that I mentioned to you earlier. Um, go to, into that one. And, and now I'm going to come to the designs. And you'll see what you have right here. So this is actually the live on coffee and flowers. Now, that doesn't reflect your personality. And I went ahead and included it because I know there's coffee fanatics out there like me. My, coffee, my husband calls me a coffee snob. I truly do love coffee. If you know me, it's a joke. So if this, this was kind of a joke. I'm going to put coffee in there because I love coffee. And I found this thing on Pinterest. One of my favorite places to waste time is Pinterest. I was like, oh, that'll be cute. So I digitized this. And I've incorporated it there for you, and it's the perfect size if you wanted to just cut that out. Because I'll talk a little bit about fonts in a minute. But if you don't happen to fall into that category, um, I also included a live, laugh, and love, which is kind of a generic thing, but uh, it's very easy to do. So let me show you how I created that. We're going to use this tool called Import TTF, which is True Type Font Artwork. You're going to click on that, and then this is the dialog that pops up. Type your lettering in there. So I'm just going to use live, laugh, and love for an example. But you know, ladies and gentlemen, you can customize this with, with whatever you want. That's the whole intent behind the project. Make something that reflects you. Everybody should look a little bit different. Next, you're going to click on the select. Now, the thing about true type fonts, Perfect fonts are fonts that are installed on your computer system, on your operating system. So I have fonts on my computer that you probably don't have. Some of your fonts are standard. So an Arial font, a Times New Roman, those are standard. I use the Century font in this example because I think it's a fairly standard font. So, but please. Feel free, and I'll just, as I scroll down here, I can't even tell you how many fonts I have on my computer, but I have quite a few fonts. But for the, the purposes of the lesson, I did it in Sentry. I went ahead over on the style and chose oblique, and then I just made the sizing over here a little bit bigger, and I said okay. And now you're going to say okay here. So. What I've just done, and I'm in my original palette, so let me go back to my Floriani Poly palette and change that to a darker color so that you can just see it on the screen a little bit better. But over here under all items, what I've just done is I brought this in as artwork. Now, you have had the ability since the inception of FTCU to export artwork. So I could go right here. I could go File. I could go export artwork, and it can allow me to export this as an SVG file, a scalable vector graphic, which is the file that these digital cutting machines read. Okay, so you've had that ability. We had an update about a year ago, don't quote me on that, where we also gave you the ability to export 
artwork files as FCM. Now, these are the files that are read by Brother Scan and Cut digital cutting machine. So you don't even have to export this file. If I'm cutting on a Brother Scan and Cut, I don't even have to export the SVG file into my Brother Scan and Cut software and convert it. I export it directly to a flash drive, take it over to my machine, and plug it in. If you're using a Cricut, if you're using a Janome Artistic, if you're using a Cameo Silhouette, any of those, export it in, as an SVG file. You've had the ability to do this without any separate software for quite some time. So uh, what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to move this. And these come in as individual pieces of artwork. So if you see, I'm just clicking and dragging a box around the outside of that area. And then I'm going to come up to this tool called Group. And it makes it easier for me to work with that word. So I grouped the live, I grouped the laugh, and then I grouped the and love. And notice, of course, I did use an exclamation mark. Because then as I move these around and line them up and made them like smaller and bigger or, you know, did anything I wanted to them, uh, then that just made them easier to work with. So that's how I generated the text. So you have the ability to go ahead and generate that text yourself. Um, if you're going to uh, cut this onto vinyl for your digital cutting machine, if you're going to put the lettering on the outside of your glass, which is an option, and ladies and gentlemen, you could actually cut this lettering out of duct tape. I know that because I've cut stuff out of duct tape. So uh, here's my lettering. Uh, oh, I didn't even spell that right. I apologize. It should have been live. So life, laugh, and love. I'm not going to fix it now. But let's say I'm going to put this on the inside of the glass, which is what I did. Um, and I know you can't see it in the picture, but I actually have my lettering on the inside of the glass because it makes it look more professional, of course. How did I do that? Well, I'm going to have to do what's called mirror that. Now, I could export this to my cutting machine, and I can mirror it at my machine. All of your machines will allow you to do that at the machine. But if you're like me, you might forget to do that, and then you're going to put your vinyl in there, you're going to cut your vinyl, you're going to pull it out, and lo and behold, you didn't mirror it, and you've just wasted a piece of vinyl. And ask me how I know that one. And ladies and gentlemen, you think uh, fabric is expensive? Or wait till you start buying your vinyl. No, that's just a joke. <laughs> All right, no, it's not. Okay, so I'm going to flip that and mirror it. So that's how I did it right there. This little button, flip horizontal. This is now mirrored. And so I don't have to worry about manipulating it at my machine. Now, all I need to do is do, once again, that file, export artwork, okay? It's SVG or FCM, and it's mirrored, and it's ready for me to, to cut out on that fabric in there. All right. So that's pretty much it for the software component of the lesson for this month. So let's go back over to our PowerPoint and talk about, okay, so I, I've got this all done. How am I going to put this together? And I said, I'm going to mention this to you. I want you to know where to find the handout. So it's on your OS, Floriami Designs Free FTC Project. Now, I'm just going to toggle out of this for a second, and I want to demonstrate that for you. So this is on my computer. Windows Explorer. So on most of our new operating systems, we have this nice folder to click on. Uh, you maybe click on the icon My Computer on your desktop. So this is what's called Windows Explorer. Let's you see all of your libraries. And you're going to locate this right here. And yours might be called something else. But what you're looking for is this parentheses, C colon, parentheses. Okay? That's your C drive. Once you have that highlighted, highlighted here, you're going to look for this folder called Floriani. And you're going to open it. So I just did a quick double click with my mouse to open it. Okay, so now that it's open, locate this folder called Design, double click. And in that folder, there's your free design. And if you wanted to add designs to your library, this is how you do it. You just copy them into this folder. But right here, at free FTCU project. Open that up, 
open up July all the way and right there see this PDF file open that and this is what you're going to print and when I put this together I try to be, be real conscientious about paper so if and I plan it this way if you have the ability to print double-sided file print and print off both sides do that because that's how I set the project up. So I actually set it up with the intention that you're going to print on two sides. So instead of using 12 pieces of paper, you're only going to use six pieces of paper to work off of. And then you can actually even um, put a three, do a three ring punch in there and put them into a binder and hang on to these projects for later in there. But that's how I intend to do that. That's where that is. Print that off. If you don't have double sided printing, then just print it. You're going to have 13 pieces of paper. All right, so that's where you locate and find your PDF file. All right, so let's go back and finish up our presentation. I'm, I'm going to, for the next couple of months, definitely go back and illustrate that because I think there have been a lot of questions. And we just had our educator training. It was so funny because Kathy Quinn, she and I drove together, and she, she's driving me to the office, and she says, Kathy, you're not going to believe this. I discovered last night where to find the handout for the free projects. I was just chuckling because we don't. Sometimes I think we don't do a good good job of showing that. So I will for the next couple of months definitely make sure that I say this is where you find the handout for your project, and so you can print that off. And if you're a dealer, print off one for everybody in your class. As far as decorations go, um, that's going to be up to you. Um, when you get ready to embroider the design, and I put embroider design, design S, because as I said, I went ahead and my project, I made it so that I can um, <laughs> embroider it all in one hooping in this really super huge hoop that I have. Um, if you don't have that, then you know, you're going to do four separate uh, stitch outs. But number one, Fuse Dreamweave Ultra to the back of your fabric. Ladies and gentlemen, um, when you are embroidering on fabric, if you can fuse Dreamweave Ultra to the back of that fabric, you will see an incredible difference in the results that you get. What Dreamweave does is it's a prep, and I say this every month also, but I'm a fanatic about it because this is one product, just like Template Tearaway that really made a difference. I was frustrated by things like puckering and things like that. And all of a sudden I started using Dreamweave. It was like, oh my gosh, it's worth it. It increases the thread count of your fabric. And I'm using good fabric. So I just want you to know that. I'm going to hoop Floriani Perfect Stick Tearaway. Remember that's um, already got the adhesive. So I score it and peel the paper away. And then um, I do like to use a placement line in there. I don't know why, it's a habit. Um, I have a placement feature um, on my machine. It's called a tack down stitch. Um, I'll just go back real quickly to our FTCU software to your Floriani Fun Quilting. Because if you have a machine that doesn't have that, you don't need it. You've got this feature right here called Auto Base. And when you click on Auto Base, it's going to go ahead, and the first thing that's going to stitch out is a basting. See, it looks at the size of your design, and it stitches that basting feature for you. So um, just so you know, you don't have to have the basting feature on your machine to, it, to take advantage of that. And I always use that, especially if you're not going to hoop the fabric, use the basting feature. Um, okay, so I've got my stabilizer in there. I did float a layer of Floriani Tearaway in there. And when we talk about floating, I'm not going to hoop that stabilizer. I actually usually just take a piece of that and put it underneath the, um, the hoop before I go. But this is a real large hoop. And so I did go ahead and with my embroidery perfection tape, I cut a piece of my Floriani Medium Tearaway stabilizer. And then I just taped it on the back there so that I didn't have to worry about it shifting. And if it shifts, it's not a big deal, but I wanted to make sure that it was in place. Um, I also, for this project, used heat and gone topping. So once I had my hoop ready and I've got my fabric on there and I added my uh, heat and gone topping, you'll see that I also once again went back and put on that 
spacing stitch. So on my machine, I just back up and stitch the same thing over again. But when I'm not hooping, and what I do is I make my machine, I take my machine and I make it all the way slow. I turn it to its lowest speed. I hit my go button and I start sewing. And I actually, this is the one time when I get my hands down into my hoop and I really try to smooth out the fabric and the topping so that I don't have any puckers or anything else and I've got some tension on there um, to get better results. All right, so we're, we've got that and then you're just gonna go ahead and you're gonna stitch out your design. Okay, now construction tips. This is actually putting the project together. So you're getting crafty. Yes, I try to incorporate sometimes a little bit of crafty element in there. So I'm really trying to push the envelope on the projects of the month so that it's like we're not just sewing and embroidering, but we're doing some other things in there to, to get our creative juices going. Um, when you're doing a shadow box, you're supposed to add ephemera. Okay, now I know that's a big word that you may not know, but I went ahead and Googled that word for you. Ephemera is another fancy word for memorabilia. So we go places, we go on a trip around the world. We save things like brochures and tickets and patches and napkins and, you know, really weird stuff. Now, what do you do with the stuff that you save? Well, I just store it in big boxes in the garage. And when I die or when I move, I'm going to have to get, somebody's going to have to get rid of all that ephemera that I've collected. But this is a great project for your ephemera. So you can add that in there. Um, me, I use Notion, so I went to the store. Flowers, I found some really cute little floral butterflies that you're supposed to stick on flowers, and I'm like, oh, hot glue, I'm going to add them in there. And then, of course, if you know me, I also add crystals. I love to put crystals on there. And this is from Debbie Homer. This is a quote from Debbie Homer. If some is good, more is better. You know, you can just really go over the top with this project in there. When you're putting the the project together, here's just some tips that I would suggest. Um, so you've got your picture, your uh, your frame for your shadow box. Save the paper from the frame. Now, if you're like me, I open up my frame, I throw the paper away. But guess what? That paper is a perfect pattern for the pic your picture frame. So save it. I fold it in into quarters, and then I use that paper as my placement guide for cutting my fabric. So I folded it in half, um, and I, you can barely see this, but I took a friction pen and I did a cross hatching on here with my friction pen so that I would have that perfect half mark. So it's folded in half. Once again, my wonderful embroidery perfection tape. I taped it down, I flipped it back, and then I went ahead and um, I, with a straight edge ruler, I went ahead and I added my about a half of an inch seam allowance and I cut it off. On the corners, not corners, corners, sorry I missed that, I did go ahead and see where I've got this marked. I did go ahead and trim that out, trim it straight down because you're going to fold the fabric and wrap it around to the back of the picture frame and then glue it and I used hot glue for that. And um, when you do that, if you cut the corners out, then you're not going to have bulk down in the corners there. So cut that little square out to eliminate the bulk. Okay. With my frame backing, okay, so I've got my straight edge ruler. And, um, okay, add dimension to the fabric. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Um, I cut a piece of Floriani Heat and Stay Light Fusible, and I used my, my piece of paper, my pattern. And I put that under the fabric on top of the backing just to give it a little bit of lift and loss. That's optional, but I think it looked kind of nice. And if you have any residual, I don't want to say this word puckering, but I'll go ahead and say it anyway, puckering. If you have any puckering in that project, then that, um, that fleece underneath there can kind of keep, you know, it, it can um, hide a multitude of sins. So I, I did put that in there. Uh, I cut it the same size and then I fused it on the back. As far as the frame itself, now I'm getting to that one. You're going. I trimmed it off. So you'll see, this is my straight edge ruler and I have two rotary cutters in my uh, room. And so one of my rotary cutters actually, I, 
it's for cutting paper. I do not cut paper and I do not cut fabric with the same rotary cutter blade because when you cut paper with your rotary cutter, it'll put little teeny tiny nicks in it. And then when you get ready to cut fabric, it doesn't cut it cleanly. So I have a I take my old blades and I move them over into this paper cutting rotary cutter and that becomes my paper cutting. So I shaved off the edge of the frame. Here's my straight edge, my paper cutting. I've laid it there and just shaved off, just trimmed it off like an eyelash length. And the purpose of that is just to accommodate the bulk from the fabric and the fleece when I wrapped it in and I tried to put it back into my picture frame. And that worked really well. Um, you're going to fuse your fabric to the frame. I use this all-purpose spray adhesive, okay? It goes on really nicely but make sure that you use this in your garage, okay? It's a permanent adhesive. If it gets on anything in your sewing room, as I said, it's permanent. So when I'm using this adhesive, and I've used it before, um, and there's lots of different kinds, so that's why I didn't put the brand name on there. But um, I just run out to my garage. I have a big box in the garage, and um, I lay the stuff in there and then I spray in the garage so, and I move my cars out of the garage when I do this. I don't want that sticky stuff on anything. As far as the lettering goes, um, if you're going to do the lettering, when you get ready to do that, you're going to use what's called a kiss cut. Um, I mentioned in the handout that accompanies the lesson, I talked about the craft and cut software. Not to do a shameless um, plug for our Floriani craft and cut software. But ladies and gentlemen, if you own one of those cutting machines or if you're considering getting one, you are doing yourself a great disservice if you don't invest in that craft and cut software. Um, after I bought my cutting machine, it sat in a box for a year because I really didn't know what a kiss cut was. I didn't know how to work with any of the products. I didn't know how to cut vinyl. I didn't know about marrying things. When I had a, a sheet of heat transfer vinyl, I'm like, well, which side do I cut from? I didn't know any of that. Plus, I didn't know how to manipulate the blade setting on my machine properly. Okay, the blade settings that came with my workbook are not for, didn't tell me how to cut fabric or vinyl or deco magic or any of those things. And so I was so thrilled when I got my copy of the Floriani Craft and Cut software because I watch those videos by Hope Yoder, and I will tell you something. My machine now sits on my uh, on a table in my sewing room. It has a place of honor, and I use it. I mean, that's the whole thing. I actually use it. But I'm going to kiss cut my vinyl in reverse, and I did it in reverse, and then it's on a piece of, of transfer tape here. And the Hope Yoder video, I didn't know how to do this. There's videos embedded into the software, and I watched her video, and she showed me how to do it. It's really pretty cool. And then I adhered my vinyl to the inside of the glass using this transfer tape, and it went on perfectly, just perfectly. It's, it's, so, it's so fun. So once I've got my glass done, I'm going to embellish it. So this is a picture. I found this in the floral picks, and it's just a little butterfly, and it kind of matched the colors. I was going to put lots of butterflies in, but one was really good. You don't see this in the picture, but I also... There's small little flowers right here, and I did embellish that with crystals, and you know I only use the Worski crystals in there. And once again, I talked about this in a previous webinar, but when you look at this picture, the uh, Swarovski crystal versus, and you know, not to mention brand names, but this is just a, a brand name. It's a hot fix crystal you get at the store. It's not a Swarovski, but when I took a picture of it, it looks like the picture is out of focus, but it's not. That just has to do with how those, those cheap crystals reflect the light. And ladies and gentlemen, these are like diamonds. When you buy a good diamond, it costs more because it reflects light differently. And it's the same thing with crystals. And when you put a project like this together, you know, you're not, I, you know, I probably put $2 worth of crystal on the project in there. So, um, it's not even a big deal. So that's the end of this month's lesson. I want to go ahead and do a looking ahead. So in August, the object project of the month, the August project of the month, um, is going to be this apron, and it's called Applique Apron with Attitude. 
And I need to let you know that in August, we will not be doing a live webinar. So in August, you will download your free design. The design in the project handout will download. But the video is going to be available on the myfloriani.club. So when you get ready to put your project together to watch the video, you want to go into the myfloriani.club and uh, watch the video there. So it will not be live. But the nice thing is, is that since it's not live, I don't have many and, uh, and typos as I do here. So anyway, that project will focus on applique techniques. This is one of our newest You Design It collections. Um, I love this collection because it's called Notion, something Notion, I'm sorry, I forget the name of it, but it's so cute. So we'll be looking at that, and then we'll be looking at different techniques for working with applique. Kathy Quinn did an educational video not too long ago on applique, and I thought, oh my gosh, that's right, we really need to um, investigate applique in, applique in more depth in that lesson. And um, for instance, in the applique lesson, there's different types of applique, so we'll explore those. In finishing up, uh, I want to mention Let's Get Social. I hope you are on our Floriani Embroidery Facebook page. So if you're on Facebook, which I think most of us are, probably on Facebook too much, um, make sure that you uh, go in and join the Floriani Embroidery Group. And when you do, um, you'll see announcements about different things you get a weekly free embroidery design. So if you're on that group every Friday when you go in, um, you get a free design. If you're on Instagram or Twitter, um, my username is at Casey Farrell. And so if you do this project or whatever, or if you want to follow me, you can um, uh, go into at Casey Farrell. Um, if you do a project and you want to post it up there, um, hashtag Okay, hashtags are only describers about the project. They make them searchable. Hashtag floral fun, hashtag July project, and hashtag Floriani embroidery. And with that, I'm going to say thank you. If you have any questions about this month's project, please feel free to email me at Kathy F at rnkdistributing.com. And so until next time, I'm going to turn it over to DJ. Are you there? I am. Thank you very much, Kathy. And did a wonderful job. And we look forward to seeing August's project very soon. Yeah. And, and until next time, everybody, thank you for joining us. And uh, look forward to seeing you again shortly. Thanks, DJ. Thanks, everybody. Thank All right.